What's up, YouTube? Let's talk about the filters in Faceplant. So this is another thing that's come up quite often, you know, especially on my uh, latest videos, people are saying, oh yeah, Faceplant is great, but the filters are kind of weak or the filters are quite, kind of limited. And I don't think that is quite the case. I think that, uh, you know, us music producers have just become accustomed to these plugins, which have a uh, hundred different filter types, but a lot of them aren't necessarily traditional kind of filters they're using other effects in the process so what i kind of want to do is i want to show you a little way to kind of create your own unique filters in faceplant and a couple of reasons why i don't think that the, the filters in faceplant are all that limited i think you can actually do quite a lot with them if you just think a little bit out of the box and yeah i'm pretty sure that they are adding some more filter types in as well as the ability to change the slopes but that being said is i still want to show you guys some cool techniques for creating your own unique filters and stuff like that. So let's dive in and have a look. So to keep things simple, I'm just going to use a regular saw wave for this. And what we can do is uh, we can actually put in a step designer over here. I think there is one already. Cool, so let's pop the filter effect over here. So one thing you'll notice is that, you know, it is pretty limited. You've pretty much got seven choices here in the type of filters that you can use. But what a lot of people don't realize is the, what a lot of people don't realize is that you can double these up um, and create macros to control both of them, for example. So let's just uh, put this macro on both. And now what we've done is we've essentially created a filter with double the amount of slope. So uh, what we can do is let's just uh, disable this and listen to the difference in the sweep with just one filter and then do it with uh, both filters. What we can actually do here is just turn this to zero on both so that we get the full sweep. So essentially you're not limited to just two. What we can do is let's actually just apply the Q to this uh, macro as well and also turn it down to zero on both of these filters. So now we've got control of the cutoff as well as the resonance um, on our kind of uh, double filter that we've created. Okay, there was a lot of low end coming through there, so I'm just going to put an EQ on just so we're not kind of killing our subs. So you see, you actually got quite a lot of range, you know, when you start stacking up these filters, you can start pushing it beyond, you know, your traditional uh, 12, 24 dB um, and those types of filters. You can get some really kind of crispy, gritty, uh, resonant tones out of it when you kind of stack them up like that. Um, you're also not limited to using the same uh, of all of these filters. You can, for example, use like a high pass, a high pass, and then two band passes. Um, and then kind of alter each one of them individually. What we can actually do is just to keep things so I can see all of these effects, we're going to put these two 
onto this row over here, just so we can kind of visually see everything that's going on. So another, another really interesting thing you can do is you can alter the frequency of each of these ever so slightly so that the resonant pitch of each one is slightly different. And then you create even more of a kind of gritty effect. And furthermore, we can kind of change the amount of modulation which gets applied. So the, 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 the frequency of that resonant tone is not stable as you modulate it. So you're kind of creating a unique filter, uh, you're creating this kind of unique filter response when you tweak it. Listen to the, the difference here. So when you start to kind of change the pitch and the amount of modulation that gets applied, you can uh, do them backwards as well, but it starts to create this kind of like vocal texture in the sound. And as far as I know, it's a similar way to how a formant filter is created, is using several band pass or several different types of filters and modulating them ever so slightly um, while in series. And you can kind of hear, it gives it that kind of like vocal texture so what we can do is let's actually just switch this over to band pass as well. Let's turn off this first one. So we've just got basically three band pass filters. Um, and let's just put them on slightly different frequencies. Like let's go with uh, like 300, 600 or around there and like 900 or so. Anyway, you get the picture. I could play around all day creating these weird uh, resonant tones and stuff. Anyway, <clears throat> so another really cool way of creating your own kind of unique filters is using the Slice EQ in Faceplant. So over here, you've actually got the ability to pop up this little filters panel over here. And as you can see, you've got a cutoff. That's, uh, it's, it's, a low pass, uh, it's a low pass filter at the moment but you can change the type of filter. So let's say, for example, just remove this one by clicking the X over here. So we can add a node, like let's say, for example, low pass filter, but we can actually also add like a little bump here in the mid range. And now we can set our macros to control, for example, the frequency over here and of this one as well. So now when we tweak this, the bump moves along with it. But what we can do is we can also set it so that like as we move it higher, the bump goes higher. So you don't get that kind of like distorted low frequency when it's lower like this. So what we can do is let's just turn this down to somewhere like this 
And then you can set this to modulate the cue or the gain. And the gain would like uh, determine how much that bump is raised. And the cue would determine the sort of uh, width of that bump, you know. So let's not actually go too high on the gain, something like this. I think that frequency might be go low like that. Yeah, this looks good. So we've created our own kind of unique high pass filter and it's got a kind of different tone to just a regular high pass filter because we've created our own sort of uh, little kind of bump in the mid-range that moves as you sweep the frequency. So you're not limited to kind of directly applying the macro to these controls. Another really, really cool thing to create these kind of weird, uh, how can I say, these kind of like weird uh, uh, responses that might be kind of unique is to use a multiply module. So what we can do is, let's just move this over here and pop this open again. And just for simplicity's sake, let's add another peak. Let's just make it like a wide one like this. So now what we can do is we can set this macro to modulate the multiplier and then set the output of the mod multiplier to modulate this frequency over here. So what we can set it to do is, let's say for example, times 10, and you can see it moves very quickly like that, and then fine tune it with this input B over here. So you can create these kind of slightly smoother curves using that one. So you're not limited to obviously controlling it with your mouse like I am. You can use LFOs, all sorts of things like that. Um, the multipliers is a very cool way of kind of, um, how can I say, uh, routing multiple inputs into one output and then swapping what input is uh, modulating that, for example. So here, let's say um, we weren't sure whether we wanted to you know, control it with uh, a MIDI controller or we wanted to control it with the LFO, you could kind of just start off with an LFO, send that to a multiplier that's multiplying you know, times one. Uh, let's just do this here. Um, and then get this to control all of these parameters. So I'm actually just going to mute this guy and click on the filter over here and set this to modulate. Okay, I think this might be on times two or something already. And then, you know, say for example, we don't want uh, the, the LFO to control this anymore. We want to swap it for the ma this macro. Then you can just double click over there, set the macro to control this input. And you've essentially swapped those controllers around. Um, it'll probably be more realistic if this is on unipolar, but you get the picture. You're also not limited to only using EQs and filters and that kind of thing. You can create your own uh, sort of, you can create your own kind of unique filter uh, tones using distortions and all sorts of things and kind of mix them in depending, you know, how the kind of frequency is sweeped. So let's just play around with like, you know, maybe dry, uh, uh, tweaking this bias over here with the frequency control that we've set up. So the bias of a distortion is generally, you know, if it's low, then the low frequencies get accentuated before the distortion and vice versa, as far as I know. So we could use this kind of as a, you know, frequency sweep and maybe apply some of this cue to the mix as well. So it's more drastic when the cue is up.
that kind of adds a kind of like dirty texture to a filter. You know, if you're not looking for that kind of like clean filter sound, you can use all sorts of ways to dirty it up before filtering it to create these kind of unique filter tones. So unfortunately, Faceplant has yet to add an option to save your entire uh, effects rack as a preset. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to add such a thing, so I'm not going to be uploading any presets for this video. But hopefully I've kind of showed you guys, uh, or at least inspired you guys to go out and create your own, you know, unique filters using EQs and stuff like that. You don't necessarily have to use uh, Faceplant, you can do this with various different uh, VST plugins. But I like the way you can stack up multiple of these uh, same instances, like with a filter, for example, when I showed you in the beginning. I like the multiplier. It's a very easy way to create these kind of uh, these uh, responses that move differently um, and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, you know, when I was showing you that multiple uh, bandpass filters using a multiplier on some of those could be a very, very interesting technique. Anyway. A big thanks to IDM Mag, proud supporters of the dance music scene and my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. If there's different things that you do to create similar sounds, also let me know in the comments. As always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.